So cumulative frequency scale. Cumulative frequency scale. Okay, so we get the Toshit question. Let's do question six. So, 100 pps were tested to determine the IQ. 100 pps were tested to determine the IQ. They are tested. to determine the IQ and data is as follows. And the results are as follows. So we've got the IQ. And then number of pupils. So we've got the IQ, then we've got the number of pupils. number of pupils. Okay, so I've uploaded most of the videos that we've had on my YouTube. So you can always watch, uh, refer to them for a revision. Eh? So you, ju you just type, you go, my, you go on YouTube and type my name, right? You'll be able to find the videos. All right, sir. Just type in Kumbula there. The videos will come. So we have 45 to 55. Then the number of people, which is the frequency is one. And then 55 to 55. The frequency is one. Five. To 75, the frequency, the frequency is two, and then we've got 70, oh no, 75 to 85, the frequency is six. And eight five to nine five. The frequency is twenty one, and the next the frequency is twenty nine, which is nine five to one zero five, and then one zero five to one fifteen. We are getting. Twelve, one twenty-five to one twenty-four. We're getting four. Okay, so that's the data that we have, and they want us to find on question A. Find the mean and standard deviation and standard deviation. And standard deviation, then on B, 
draw a cumulative frequency graph. Draw a cumulative cumulative frequency graph. Then and estimate how many people have IQ. Okay, so we say C. Hence, estimate how many pupils, how many pupils of IQ, IQs. I don't know what this question implies. Or IQs within one on either side of the mean. IQs within one on either. side of the mean. So uh, roughly here, we are testing the knowledge of the, in, the interquartile range. So I almost ignored that, owing to the fact that you still remember everything you learned at grade 12, but however, it's important to go through. We can go through it once again. Okay, so let's get started now. Solution. So we need to complete the table. We need to complete the table. We've got IQ, then mid class value, and so on and so forth as we did previously. So we've got IQ, then mid class. Mid class value, then what else? The frequency, the frequency F, this would be FI. Okay, what else do we need to have? We need to have the cumulative frequency, which we already know. Then we need to have the product of Fi, Xi, and we also need to have Fi, Xi squared. Okay, so these are the things that are required in our table. So let's complete the table now. So complete our table. Okay. So on the IQs, we've got 45 to 55. The mid class here quite well is 50. And the frequency is one. Then 55 to 55. The mid class here is 60, then 65 to 75, then 75 to 85, 85 to 
1.5 according to the given value 134. Okay, so this is what we have. So this is our table. The mid values now we can fill in. We've got 70, 80, 90, 100, uh, 110, 110, 120, and the last one, and the last one will be 1.9.5. 1. Since it's the upper limit of the last class is 134, it didn't go up to 135. Eh? So that becomes the mid class. We fill in the frequencies. So one, then we've got two, uh, we've got six, six, we've got 21, 21, we've got 29. 29, we've got 24, 24, we get 12, then we get four. Then the cumulative frequency, we know that to start with one, then we add the next one, we get two, plus two, then we get four, isn't it? Plus six, we get 10, plus 21, we get the one, right? Plus 29. We get 50. We get it. 60. 60. Okay, so we get 60. Then the next 84, right? Is it 84? 84. Yes. Then 96. No, sir, it's not 60. It is uh, 50. 21 plus 29, right? 21 plus 29. No, it's 21 plus 31. Or 31? Yeah, 1 plus 20. Yes. Okay, so then we get under there. Okay, so let's now get the product. The product is xi times z times the fi. We multiply this times this, we get a 50. 60 times one, we get just like that. Eh? So much plain the two columns. And so we get the following. We have 50 here. We've got 60. And then we've got 140. We've got 480, we've got 1890, then 2900, then 2640, 1440, and we get 518. Okay, and then when we, when we square xi, then multiplied by fu, we get these values. I mentioned that the last column is just important if the question demands the, the variance eh, or standard deviation. Eh? Okay, so we've got 3600, and then uh, 290, 400, 172, 800. Then we've got 67081. Let's get the summations. Here, F of summation of Fi up to any, when we sum, we get 100, isn't it? We get 100 when we add those numbers. Then we also get the summation of Fi, 
if I text I F I X I here the summation gives us one zero one one eight. Okay, so we get that and the summation in the last column is F I X I squared. This gives us four one zero four four. Eight, six, one. So this is what we get. And now we can easily compute the mean. The mean, you know that the mean is given by X bar being equal to summation of F I X I divided by summation of F I. So dividing the two of 10118 divided by 100. This gives you 101.218. So this is your mean. And then they also want the standard deviation. The standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance, isn't it? So standard deviation SD is equal to the square root of the variance summation of F squared divided by summation of F minus x bar squared. So you substitute what you have from the table. You have all these values divided by 100 minus your mean, which is equal to 101.18, then square root. So when you simplify here, you get 14.471 two, six, eight, zero, nine. So this is what you get. Excuse me, sir. Good excuse. Mm, sir, I was asking, the, this formula which you have used, is it the same when we say summation of F, summation of frequency, open bracket, mm, mm, mi, the mid value, which is X minus C? mean and then you square mean, you over it. it. The, the the formula, when finding the standard the, the standard deviation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I must it's one and the same. So like per end your box where you have added x squared. If I had to put C F open bracket X minus C mean and then I and then okay. I square that part. X I minus mean, then you square this part. You have this value. Yes, yes, sir. Right. Then divided by summation of F. And then I would divide mm, summation of F. Summation of F. Okay, yeah, probably they, they, they are the same. They are the same. Oh, okay, thank yeah. you, sir. Unless the generator was different. Eh? You know, there's the sample population. Uh, but uh, on this one. So you don't put the, the, the but minus so, the mean square. Yeah, uh, on this one. You, don't, you, can't, the mean you shouldn't the add. Before, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, so, sir. Uh, yeah. Oh, so it's just the derivative of that. Oh, yeah. So it's the same. Yeah, yeah. I see. It's just the same. Okay, okay. thank you, sir. So we can go to the next the B part. The B part, they want us to do a cumulative frequency curve. Eh? A cumulative frequency curve. So you are going to get the upper limits and the, and the cumulative frequency. So to draw the cumulative frequency curve, we are saying that you get you get the cumulative frequency, you get the cumulative frequency, and the upper limits. So mean that you got upper upper limit, and then the cumulative frequency. 
So this is what you have. So from your table, the, the cumulative shipping starts from zero. The next one is the, sorry, I picked the wrong value. So the cumulative frequency starts from one, eh? one followed by two, followed by four. You are just picking from the previous table, followed by four. And then after four, we've got 10, 10, we've got that one, that one, we've got skisti. After skisti, we've got eight, four. After eight, four, you've got 94. After 94, no, no, eight, four. You're getting 96, eh? 96. From the, from the table that we drew, you have 96. And then after 96, you've got 100, you've got 100. Okay, then we get the upper limits here. Uh, have you mistaken the, like you've put the upper limit in the column where it's supposed to be? We've read things opposite, yeah? Isn't it? Yeah, you have so, done the opposite. So we'll do this. We'll delete this word limit. So we've got the cumulative frequency. So the cumulative frequency is there, and then upper limit is here. So the upper limit, you've got a 50, I don't know, 55, yeah? 55 from the first class, then you've got 65, then you've got 75, then you've got 85, then you've got 95. We're getting from the upper limit of the class. Eh? After 95, we've got 105, 105, we've got 115, then 125, and the one. 34. So this is what this is what will give you the cumulative frequency curve. So we can now draw that curve. Sir. Yes, my friend. Before before you proceed, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if you can go back to the previous one. No, the, the table. This that's where my question is. I'll go back to the table. Okay. Yes, the table. Okay, we can go back. Okay. Yes. Please. Yes, sir. Here, uh, sir. Uh, in the case where we have got maybe here there was for, uh, let's say there was a uh, forty-five, uh, forty-four, then fifty, ooh, ooh, ooh. maybe fifty-five, and then the. Uh, okay. Like uh, the, there was the same the, the uh, a question. I get like, your question. Uh, question one. Question. Question for question ten in I the same situation. Question. These numbers like, are in the case are, where are you have got a difference. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so yeah, the, they're different there. In the case so where what are you the limits do? are different, what you're supposed to do, it means when they are different, it means the data is discrete, it is not continuous. So you have to make you make, you make it continuous by subtracting 0 0.5. By subtracting 0 0.5 from the lower limit, and then you add 0 0.5 on the upper limit so that you start from the same upper limit. So that is how we make the data continuous in that case. Eh? Okay, so we'll do the one, one question on that uh, probably tomorrow. And then tomorrow we'll also begin revising. We we'll look, we'll revise the sketching of trigonometric graphs, just the sketching and the equations. Eh? So we'll, we'll, sir. We'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, okay, like, uh, yeah, yeah, I know that we're going to do that, but uh, like, uh, I read the certain book, like the way they solved that one, they just added the 45 plus 55 and just found the midi point. That would be your, your X axis. I don't know if that can be okay as well. Uh, well, that's the same as uh, uh, finding uh, it. Uh, no. When it is discrete, you don't do that. For quite where well, the midi points are important okay. in, in, make, in finding the, the mini and the standard deviation. Eh? But when if coming up yes, with, the, with the cumulative frequency scale, we don't use the midpoints, they are not important. Uh -huh. So we need the upper limits. Now, the upper limits, if the data was discrete, okay. you need to make it continuous. So okay. I'll, yeah, I'll okay. give you a question tomorrow. It's not the same. Okay.
So we can now come up with our sketch. We can come up with our sketch now. So our cumulative frequency is starting from zero. Zero. Let's make this intense. So this is 10. The next one is 20. The next one is 30. Then 40. Then 50. Then 60. Then 70. 80. 90. Until we reach the last one, which is 100. Okay. Then we said that on the denominator, Okay, so we proceed now. I was on mute for a while. So we do the sketch now. So we say that we are picking the, the upper limits. So we've got 55, that's the upper limit for the first class. Then we've got 65, uh, 75, 85, 95, uh, 105, then 115, uh, 125, and last one should find. Okay, so we we'll just plot these points. So 1, 55. Maybe 1, 55. We can have maybe some point there. Then 65, comma what? Comma 2. 65, comma 2 can be there. Then 75, comma 4. Be there, then eight five comma ten can be there, eight five comma ten, all by set one, set one comma nine five. Okay, so not not that the cumulative frequency is on the vertical end. Uh, yes, in our table we swapped things. So the upper limits are down here, upper limits. So the cumulative frequency is on the vector axis, eh? on the vector axis. Okay, let's progress. Then we've got 95, 95, 31, eh? 95, 31, okay, can be there. Then 105, 60, 105, 60, somewhere there. 115,84, somewhere there. The one 125,96, can be somewhere there. Any 134,100, you can have the last point there. So then you join, you join to form your, your curve. So you join these points. No corners because this is a cave. Right? Okay, so this is your cave. This is how your cave will look. And then they can ask you to find the interquartile range. Eh? So they are saying the number of pupils that have IQ within either side of the mean, either side of the mean. Okay, what was our mean? Do you remember what our mean was? 
Okay. So now in this case, in this case, okay, I'm coming. Is the okay? So let's now get to the question. So we've been given the standard. They are saying find the the number of, let's get to the question properly. So you, you see that they've given one standard deviation in the question A. Question. So within one, so this one must be SD. Within one, One standard deviation, one standard deviation, then on either side. Okay. So now, okay. So now, since our mean was one zero something, our mean was one zero, one zero something. Let's write our mean here. So our mean x bar, we found. I, I can get some resonance there. Are you able to hear me? Can you so? Okay. Uh, my net fifty bit. How uh, okay. so the upper so limit? Our uh, mean was one zero one point one eight ten. Okay, this was our mean. So now the given us. Again, twenty one. So since we give you one standard deviation, when we no, subtract I, I, and I, I, add one, I, I, this gives us one hundred point one eight. When we add one, we get one zero two point one eight. So this is what we get, isn't it? 
So we'll go on our graph and draw this, plot these values. We'll go on our graph and plot it and plot these values. So Android. Um, sir, sir, just can you repeat on what you just explained? I'm finding the mean, just okay. repeat your explanation. The question says, we've been given this standard deviation. Eh? We've been given this standard deviation, one. Eh? So mean that we need to find the, the IQ, how many candidates are this, a particular IQ on one standard deviation of either side of the mean. So if this is a mean, either side, to go to the right, you add the one given. So you get this upper bound. To go to the left, you add, you subtract the one given. Then you get the lower bound. So you plot those values on your curve, 100 is 100.8. So when you, when you go on your curve, you have to get some value. You have to get some value on your curve. So there would be more, you would be more accurate if you plot this, maybe using some graph, eh? using some graph paper. So we are going like that. So maybe we can get the cumulative frequency. 